What's up everyone, Rob from Ishimoto. Today we're going to install our oil cooler kit in your 2016 Plus Focus RS. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation include T30 Torx, 11 and 13 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive ratchet, extension and driver, 27 millimeter socket, one inch socket, half inch drive ratchet, and half inch drive torque wrench. 13 millimeter wrench, dash 10 AN fitting wrench, flathead screwdriver, and an oil filter socket. Installation time is two to three hours. Installation difficulty is a four out of five. Installing an oil cooler adds additional maintenance to vehicle ownership. All oil line connections should be regularly checked for leaks and retorqued. The oil filter center bolt adapter must be retorqued every time the oil filter is removed. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Remove the two torque screws that secure the passenger side headlight to the vehicle. Pull the headlight housing forward while twisting it slightly towards the outside of the vehicle to remove it. Then disconnect the electrical harness from the headlight and set it aside. Repeat this process on the driver's side. Note the tab on the headlight housing and body for reinstallation. Remove the two pop clips that secure the under tray to the stabilizer bar. Remove the eight torque screws and two pop clips that secure the under tray to the bottom of the vehicle. Slide the under tray forward and remove it from the vehicle. Remove the seven torque screws that secure the front edge of the bumper. Remove the pop clip and two torque screws that secure the passenger side fender liner to the bumper. Then pull back the fender liner to access and remove the pop clip that secures the bumper to the fender. Pull the upper corner of the bumper away from the fender to release it. Repeat this process on the driver's side. Remove the five torque screws and two pop clips that secure the top edge of the bumper. Reach down through the hole where the driver's side headlight was installed to disconnect the lighting harness. Disconnect the hood release cable from the hood latch assembly by lifting the cable up. Then remove the cable stop from the lever. Lift the tabs on the radiator support to release the bumper. There's one tab on each side, located underneath the headlight mounting location. Remove the front bumper from the vehicle by sliding it forward. Remove the two pop clips that secure the air diverter to the radiator support. Release the clips that secure the corners of the air diverter and pull it forward. Remove the two screws that secure the air ducts to the radiator support. Separate the air diverter from the ducting on each side and remove the air diverter and ducts from the vehicle. Then reinstall the pop clip that secures the corner of the air inlet duct. Place a drain pan underneath the vehicle and remove the oil filter. Then wipe off the oil filter mating surface with a clean rag. Assemble the Mishimoto sandwich plate. Lubricate the gaskets on the Mishimoto sandwich plate and spacer with fresh engine oil. Place the spacer on top of the sandwich plate, and then install the female end of the center bolt adapter through the other side of the sandwich plate. The rubber gaskets on the spacer and sandwich plate should not be touching each other. Install the sandwich plate assembly to the oil filter pedestal as shown here and secure it with the center bolt adapter. Snug the center bolt, but do not fully tighten it yet. Install the included AN fittings to the sandwich plate and tighten them completely.
Locate the oil line with a 180 degree fitting and install it to the upper port on the oil cooler. Orient the fitting so the line runs along the upper edge of the cooler and tighten it completely. Install the other oil line to the lower port on the oil cooler and tighten it completely. Locate the baffle plate in your kit. Note that the baffle plate is not symmetrical. Insert the baffle into the diversion panel as shown here. The purpose of this baffle plate is to adjust airflow through the diversion plate. Intake air temperatures can be affected by a number of factors, including driving style and ambient conditions. This panel allows you to adjust airflow for your specific needs. Attach the Mishimoto air diverter to the oil cooler with the included hardware. Locate the coarse thread screws included with your kit. There are two different sizes. The larger screws will secure the center of the air diverter, while the smaller screws will secure the outside edges. Install the screws by hand to cut threads in the radiator support. Make sure that the screws are driven in straight to avoid damaging the bores. Keep pressure on the top of the fin while you install the screws as this piece is laminated to the support and can come loose if twisted too hard. Then remove the screws. Feed the oil lines behind the driver's side radiator support and around the radiator. Pass the lower oil line through first, followed by the upper line. Pull both lines through until the air diverter lines up with the center of the vehicle. Align the mounting brackets on the air diverter with the holes you just tapped and secure it with the provided screws and washers. Slip the tabs on the ducts into the slots on the Mishimoto air diverter and secure the ducts with the original hardware. Lead the oil lines down through the engine bay underneath the upper radiator hose connection. Identify the oil line that is attached to the upper passenger side fitting on the oil cooler and install it to the rear fitting on the sandwich plate, then tighten it completely. Then install the other oil line to the fitting on the sandwich plate, which is closest to the front of the vehicle, and tighten it completely. Adjust the orientation of the sandwich plate until the lines flow freely, and then torque the center bolt adapter to 30 foot-pounds. Lubricate the oil filter gasket with fresh engine oil and install it to the vehicle. Top off the engine with one quart of Ford approved engine oil. Start the vehicle and allow it to idle for a few seconds, then shut the engine off and check the oil level. Top it off as needed and then start the engine again. Allow the vehicle to warm up to operating temperature while you inspect all of the connections for leaks. If oil begins to leak from any of the connections, shut off the engine. Loosen and retorque any leaking connections. Check the oil once more once you are done. Reinstall the front bumper. Slide the bumper over the nose of the vehicle and slip the black tabs on the bumper into the clips on the radiator support. Tuck the fender liners back into place and snap the upper corners of the bumper into the retaining clip on the fender. Reinstall the hood release cable to the latch and lead the cable through its retainers. Install the five torque screws and two pop clips that secure the top edge of the front bumper. Install the pop clip that secures the driver's side of the bumper to the fender and secure the bottom of the fender liner with the torque screws and pop clip. Repeat this process on the other side of the vehicle. Install the seven screws that secure the lower edge of the front bumper. Reinstall the under tray. There are two tabs on the subframe that fit into slots on the under tray. Install the pop clips that secure the under tray to the stabilizer bar.
Install the eight torque screws and two pop clips that secure the under tray to the bottom of the vehicle. Reconnect the wiring harness to the headlight assembly and slip the headlight back into place. The tab on the headlight housing must engage the body for the headlight to seat properly. Then secure the headlight with the original hardware. Repeat this process on the other side of the vehicle. Now that you have the oil cooler installed, it's time to take your focus for a test drive. Don't forget that the oil sandwich plate adapter bolt should be retorqued every time an oil change is performed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out.